Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we continue with the top of the range offerings from Team Red and are taking a quick look at the Radeon HD4870. Released in June of 2008 and with a price tag of 299 USD, this GPU was available with either 512 or 1GB of GDDR5 memory. And just like its predecessors, it only supports DirectX 10.1. My card was XFX branded and I've managed to purchase it on the famous auction site for only £13. Let's take a closer look at the card. The HD4870 requires two 6-pin cables from your power supply and is a dual slot card with blower type cooler, same as the older 4870 that we checked a few weeks ago. Two dueling DVI and S video outputs are present. The most visible change is the use of black PCB, and I must admit, it suits the cards really well. After removing four screws for the GPU bracket, there's ten more screws holding the board to the cooler. Another change from what we saw with the 3870, where the memory was cooled by a pair of copper heat sinks, the HD4870's memory is in direct contact with a metal plate that is holding up the fan. A few screws later, the cooler is apart. Surprised by the small amount of dust that was present, I took the heating and the plastic shroud straight to the sink for a quick wash. Time to put everything back together and of course a blob of fresh MX5 as usual. Moving on to testing, we start with Haven Benchmark where the 4870 achieved very impressive 344 points. Compare that to the 512 megabyte version that only managed 138 points, it is clearly obvious that the additional available memory really helps. Looking at the graphs, we can see the efficiency is vastly superior with the newer HD 4870, offering almost three times as many points for every watt the system pulled from the wall. The average power draw was 186 and 171 watts respectively for the 1 GB and 512 MB versions of the card. I cannot wait to see how will the newer GPU scale. Stay tuned for more. Not leaving the police of Empire Bay to rest, returning to Mafia 2, the HD4870 achieved respectable 27 FPS on average. Please note, the scores for 512MB version of the card are shown in the brackets. The MSI Afterburner shows great GPU utilization and that the game engine is not deprived of GPU memory. Lurking out of the Agroprom underground, I've decided to visit the army base in Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. The card achieved battery smooth 104 frames per second on average, impressive result, 
matching last week's dual GPU monster, the 3870X2, and almost dabbling on what the 3870 managed previously. The game engine calls for more than 512 megabytes of GPU memory at times, somewhat affecting the lesser equipped card. Fallout 3 was next, another great showing for the um, 4870. The card averaged 58 FPS, that's more than double of what 3870 is capable of. Looking at the GPU memory usage confirms that the 512 megabytes is simply not enough and would cause some serious performance hits. Since Fallout 3 is limited to only 60 frames per second, we may be looking at uh, removing this game from future testing. And finally, after two poor results from its predecessors, the 4870 achieved great results in Half-Life 2, averaging 138 frames per second. Woohoo! The game uses slightly more than 500 megs of GPU memory, but I don't think that was behind the poor results of the 3000 series, as the lesser equipped 4870 still managed 120 plus frames per second on average. Um, I'm not sure on this one. If you do, please let me know uh, in the comments below. Test Drive Unlimited 2 was next. The 4870 achieved 25 FPS on average, making the game somewhat playable. Far from smooth though. This game happily utilized over 600 megabytes of GPU memory, which reflected on the poor results for the 512 megabyte variant of the card. Next, we have a new addition to our testing, Far Cry 3. This 2012 title gave a lot of trouble to the HD4870, which only managed 16 FPS on average. This game looks amazing despite its age. Its engine used well over 800 megabytes of memory, and I really wonder what GPU would it really take to run this game maxed out at 60 frames per second. Any guesses? GTA 4 was next, another victory for the HD4870. Achieving almost 41 FPS on average, I must admit this was smooth and really very playable. The 512 megabyte version of the card is significantly worse due to the lack of the available GPU memory. Since we are not able to max out this game, I will continue testing further. Feeling a bit more brave, I've decided to give um, GTA 5 a trial. This 2013 title is still popular amongst the players and to my surprise run on the HD4870 at 28 FPS on average. However, using the game's minimum settings for 1080p resolution. Game GPU memory usage was almost at its card's limit and overall utilization was hovering in the mid 70s. Well, I'm still impressed. And for the last game in today's testing, we have another new addition, the Need for Speed Most Wanted. With its impressive visuals, this game took the HD 3870s to its knees, only achieving 7 frames per second on average. The card is clearly limited to its 1GB of memory, um, but let's continue and see what the newer generation does with this game. And there you have it guys. What do we think of the HD4870? Well, I'm impressed by the overall performance uplift it offered. Compared to its last year's predecessor, the HD3870, for just 30 USD more, we get almost twice the performance in many game titles, making this GPU a great choice. Did you used to own one, or bought one shortly after it was released? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And as ever, Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe, it is much appreciated. See you in the next one, I hear there is another dual GPU monster next.